it is it's a beautiful morning those of you who live in California we have a hard time thinking a little bit of condensation is a beautiful morning and I keep hearing from my son Nicholas who moved home from Chicago who's who just has no patience or empathy for all of us Californians whatsoever so it is a good good morning it is a beautiful morning and I'm so happy to be back with you today you know I'm I'm rarely gone but you know God is good all the time and all the time God is good. Yes, that's really true. And you all know that the Lord gave me a warning through some minor little episodes. I, I started to realize that I was rapidly approaching, boy, am I aging myself here, rapidly approaching the age my mother was when she had a major heart attack. And so I heeded those episodes and went to the doctor, went to the cardiologist, who um, um, who ordered um, a stress echo and then a cardiac catheterization, which is a test like an angiogram. And they, they did find, this is good news, they did find very early a major artery that is 50% blocked. And so all that needs to be done is treated with medication. Hallelujah. That is good news. Praise the Lord. That is really, really good news. So God is good all the, all the time, time and all the time God, God is, is good. good. I just, I praise the Lord because I believe I've been spared a heart attack. Thank you, Lord. You know, what a wonderful, what a wonderful gift. What a wonderful Amen. blessing. And you know, this past week, somebody called me and said, Sheila, I need you to pray for me because I'm awaiting results from, um, it, look, it's screening for cancer. And I finally talked to the radiologist, and the radiologist couldn't give me definitive, but said they'd call back. But they said they think it looks pretty good, but I'm afraid to get my hopes up. And I said, you don't, I said, why? Why? What's wrong with getting your hopes up? What's wrong with getting your hopes up? Amen. And you know, you've heard me say, when we get news, that we or we're afraid or we're nervous what are we supposed to do we say here we've taught I've taught you here to say ha right <laughs> ha. 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 ha 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 and it stands for we say it here hallelujah anyway Amen. and I have thought this week I said what about hope anyway Amen. hope anyway even while we're waiting for news and we don't know we haven't received it yet let's ha hope anyway Amen. It doesn't add to the length of our life to give in to despair needlessly. It does just the opposite. So let's hope anyway. And that's what we're all about here at Hope Center of Christ is bringing hope, the hope of Christ, that hope that never disappoints into the center of our hearts. Because that is life saving. Let us pray. Lord God Almighty. We thank you that because you live, because you live, we can face tomorrow. Because you live, we have hope. Because you live, we have hope for today. Because you live, we have hope for tomorrow. Because you live, we have forgiveness and grace for yesterday. What a blessing. What a gift thank that you, nobody Lord. can ever steal or take away from thank us. You, and so, Lord, we hope. We hope in you, thank you Lord. and we thank you. Thank and so now, Lord, our songs of worship from hearts that are overflowing with thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Well, when Jesus came into Jerusalem riding on a donkey, the people said in Luke 19:38. Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Oh, the king of kings, the Lord of lords, Jesus the Messiah is here with us today too. And we say to him, 
Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. He came for you and for me. Amen. Amen. And when he came, he hung on a cross and he died for our sins, that our sins would be forgiven. And the Bible also says way back in Isaiah, before Jesus was ever born to this earth, in Isaiah 50, 53, 5, it says, but he, that means Jesus, was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we were healed. So he did all that for you and for me on the cross so that we can live a miracle life by the power of the Holy Spirit and by what he did on the cross. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you.
And, you know, he will continue to do miracles in our midst. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, you know, when the children of Israel were crossing into the Jordan, uh, Joshua said to them, sanctify yourself. This is in Joshua 3, 5. He said, sanctify yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. And maybe you need to cross over into your Jordan. Don't look back to Egypt. It may look good, but it's not. Believe God that he will take you from where you are to what he's promised you. This is, a, this is for each and every one of you. God has a promise for you. So cleanse yourself before him. Say, Lord, forgive me. Cleanse me. Because I want to be ready for you to do wonders in my life. Receive that as the word of the Lord for you today as you cross over into Jordan. wonder how the people be cheering yeah right on go 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 then when we come to church and we make all that noise people say please be quiet 
Amen. But we have something more important to cheer about than an athletic event. We have to cheer about the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings. Amen. 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 Let us pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, who is our Lord and Savior, dear Heavenly Father, we humbly come before your throne. Dear God, receive our music and our song. Receive the cheering that we do, dear Heavenly Father, to lift up the name of Jesus. Dear Heavenly Father, we are so honored by your presence with us today. We pray that you would steer our hearts and our minds, dear Heavenly Father, to receive your word. As we came into this temple one way, let us go out another, victoriously praising you and Praise singing that name. God is King. Thank you, God Lord. is Lord, oh, dear Lord. Heavenly Father. Thank you, and dear God, we ask that you forgive us our Thank sins you, and our trespasses. We are so honored yes, that we can come before you, dear God, and we just give you glory and honor, and we thank you so very much as we read your word from Romans 3, 2, 21 to 26. But now God has shown us a way to be made right with him without keeping the requirements of the law as promised in the writings of Moses and the prophets long ago. We are made right with God by placing our faith in Jesus Christ. And this is true for everyone who believes, no matter who we are. For everyone has sinned. We all fall short of God's glorious standard. Yet God, with undeserved kindness, declares that we are righteous. Amen. He did this through Christ Jesus when he freed us from the penalty of our sin. For God presented Jesus as the sacrifice for sin. People are made right with God when they believe that Jesus sacrificed his life, shedding his blood. The sacrifice shows that God was being fair when he held back and did not punish those who sinned in times past, for he was looking ahead and including them in what he would do in this present time. God did this to demonstrate his righteousness, for he himself is fair and just, and he declares sinners to be right in his sight when they believe in the name of Jesus. And may God add his blessing to the reading of his word. Amen. 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 Well, today is the first Sunday of the month. It's March 1st today. Can we believe that? It seems like yesterday was Christmas, yes? But today is March 1st, and we praise the Lord for another beautiful day and another beautiful month to begin. And because it's the first Sunday of the month, we have communion. That's what we always do here at Hope Center of Christ. And we have at Hope Center of Christ, because every church does it differently, I always want to explain that we have what's considered an open table. That means all are invited to come and partake of communion here. Everybody who has accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, as your Lord and Savior, you are invited to partake of the Holy Communion. And what this means for us, those of us who have accepted Jesus as our Lord and Savior, is we, according to the Bible, which we believe is God's revealed word to us, that we are imperfect, all. There's not a single perfect person who's ever lived. The only perfect person who ever walked this earth was Jesus Christ because he was fully divine and fully human. And as such, he's the perfect, worthy lamb to take our place and to die in our place. And as a result, if we say, yes, Lord, I want you to save me so that I can be reconciled with God because God is holy a holy God can't be with unholy people yeah holy means to be separated from how can you be holy and set apart and then be around things that are tainted dirty sinful can't happen but God in his infinite mercy his son Jesus God the son came to earth to 
to stand in our place, and he died in our place, and hence, and he rose again. We believe that. And hence, we are free. We have life abundant today, and we have life eternal for the rest of our lives. We, too, will, will get to appreciate that beautiful resurrection along with our Lord and Savior when our time comes. So let me lead you in a prayer. Pray along with me. Even if it's the first time you've prayed this prayer and you want to pray it aloud, we invite you to do so. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus I know that I have sinned. I know that I have sinned. I am imperfect. I am imperfect. And yet you have had mercy on me. And yet you have had mercy on me. You sent Jesus, you came and died in my place. You sent Jesus, you came and died in my place. And Jesus, you rose again. And Jesus, you rose again. Thank you. Thank you. I believe in you. I believe in you. I want you to be my Lord and Savior. I want you to be my Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. If that's if you've prayed that prayer for the first time, even the first time, we invite you to come and partake of our communion today. Amen. And the other thing I want you to know about our communion, some of the logistics of it is that we do what's called the tincture method. And that just means that you will come forward in a moment, and I'll explain that as well. But you will, be, you will take one of these wafers. This is the bread. You take it from the tray that is presented to you. You take the wafer, and you dip it in the cup that will also be presented to you. And then you ingest together. So that is what we do as the intention method. Also, because we only have one aisle here in this beautiful church, this chapel, we, we will have uh, Miss Susan and Jim, my husband Jim, will help escort you to row by row to avoid congestion in the aisles to the location where you will come and take of your communion. So at this time, I'm going to ask those who are assisting me, Pastor Harold Shaw and Miss and Paul and Debbie Lips, if you'll come forward at this time and as I get ready to bless the elements. Lord Jesus, the same night he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it. He broke the bread and he gave it to them saying, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After the same manner also, he took the cup when they had supped. And he said, this cup is the New Testament, the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. What a sacrifice. You allowed, you allowed your body to be broken. You allowed your blood to be spilled for us as a sacrifice so that we can be reconciled with God, our Heavenly Father, today and forever. We do this now in remembrance of you. Amen.
Lord Jesus, we've already said thank you, but we can never thank you enough. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm just always in awe of the fact that we have a God who is willing to become well acquainted with grief and suffering. That when our hearts are broken, when we go through difficult times, and we run into your arms, the hands that hold us, the hands that pick us up, our hands that are pierced. Oh, you know, you understand better than anybody what it feels like to be despised and rejected. You didn't deserve anything but praise and honor and glory, and yet you humbled yourself and died on the cross in our place. And so we thank you, Lord, and we thank you for the resurrection. We thank you for the promise that that holds and that hope that will never disappoint. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. What a, what a wonderful, wonderful celebration communion is when we get to commune with each other and with God, and we know we have that blessed assurance that we've been forgiven. Oh, who here needed to be forgiven today? I did. Oh, my. I had things I did and thought and said this past week, and I thought, oh, my word. And I don't know about you, but there's many times when I say, thank you, Lord, that you've forgiven me. Thank you, thank you, thank you. What a wonderful, what a wonderful blessing 
that we can live without regrets because of the grace of Jesus Christ. Well, I neglected to say at the beginning of my, um, when I opened the whole service today with hope anyway, and I told you the story of the person who um, was getting tested for possible cancer, and I forgot to tell you the rest of the story. How many of you have heard of Paul Harvey? Paul Harvey, he used to have this radio show, and he would say, and the rest of the story is, so those of you who are old enough to remember Paul Harvey, well, the rest of the story is that it came back clear. There's no cancer, and I forgot to mention that. We have to say thank you and hallelujah for that, right? Yes. And um, before we go any further, I also want to extend my apologies. Normally, we have our words on the screen. I don't know today, but I can tell you that we are a church of volunteers, including me, including Pastor Harold. We're all volunteers. And so our setup crew and everybody who helps and with things that happen with weather for whatever reason and I'm just eternally grateful for all of our wonderful wonderful volunteers we don't have words today for if, if this is your first time here and I know for our songs our music and um, so I just want to tell you we normally do so we don't we are thoughtful of that and we want to make sure that everybody feels welcome here at Hope Center of Christ and also a great big thank you. Can we just give all our volunteers a great big thank you? I'm not going to list you all by name because there's too many of you, but they, yes, every, they come in early, early Sunday morning and they reset up all of the sound and everything because we put it away and they stay, there's a group that stays after and puts it away too. So thank you. Those of you who are watching on the internet, I hear from you all the time. I had some emails this morning and via Facebook. Sheila, I can't wait to see this Sunday's service. So those of you who watch, you know who you are. We are happy to be here for you, and thank you for your, your wonderful words of encouragement and support, and also your financial support. It is a huge, huge blessing to us. And um, so in a moment, we're going to start getting our tithes and our morning offerings ready. And... Um, we have so many different people who support us from around the world, even out of state. It's amazing to me. And um, But in the meantime, in addition to getting your tithes and offerings out, we ask that you take out those orange cards that are in front of you. We make them orange specifically so that uh, they're easy to spot. Uh, please fill out your name and contact information. Put it in the offering plate in a moment because we want to be able to keep you connected with what's happening. If we have any special announcement, things that are going on at Hope Center of Christ, we want you to know about it, be the first to know about it. We do a lot of that through email, it saves money, and it's also easy, it's efficient. And also, we these, these are a tremendous place for prayers and praises. And oh my word, we love to hear what God is doing in your life. God is alive. God is moving. We see that here at Hope Center of Christ. And when God does move, when God does answer those prayers, we want to join you in praising and thanking God for as well. So please fill out your prayers and praises. Even if you think, oh, it's trivial, God has way too much to worry about. He can't be concerned with this little thing of mine that's nagging at me or keeping me awake at night. God cares. It says in the Bible, he knows the number of hairs on your head. I know that's hard to understand, but we're not God. And God, but God does. He knows and he cares about every little thing that's going on in your life. So let us know. And if you need prayer, we're happy to pray for you. We also want to encourage you, if you are at all interested in helping to serve our community, we are very, very committed to bringing hope to others. We know that not everybody will come and get, get hope. So we have, it's called Hope to Go. We bring hope to people who can't get up and come. And we do that through partnering with Orange County Rescue Mission and the Chili Van and bringing it out and serving hot bowls of food to families who would or otherwise go hungry. And it's a tangible way for them to say, oh, God has not forgotten me. I thought he had. But here, here is a bowl of chili. And it reminds me that God 
hasn't given up on me. God hasn't forgotten me. And we hear that all the time. So if you'd like to be a part of that, please see Pastor Harold. He's going to be preaching later. You'll know who he is. You can't miss Pastor Harold. And to ask him and tell him you want to be a part of this ministry with us. So we know um, all of you. Did you all park in the orange in the public library today if you had to park a car? You all did. Did anybody not? Don't raise your hand. Just get up and go move your car before you get a ticket. Okay? Nobody? Okay. We're good to go there. That's wonderful. And you know that we normally have potluck afterwards on this, the first Sunday of the month. And if you check your emails, <clears throat> if you check your emails, you will, would have seen that we canceled because of the weather report today. But that's okay. Some of us are very busy, and we pray for you. And um, it's been postponed, and, but the email had an error in it, so that's okay. So there's, there will be a follow-up email going out. Um, we've postponed it to next Sunday, March the 8th. So we will be having potluck next Sunday, weather permitting. Okay? So that concludes our announcements for today. And I just want to thank you for being here because... The church isn't, a, is not Hope Center Christ without you. And so you are a blessing to us. And I just want you to know that God is so happy to have you join him here today. Yes, he's at lots of churches. He's in lots of places. But he's also right here today. And this is a wonderful place for you to, to worship him, to get to know him better and to get to know his word better through the Bible. So let us pray. Lord, as we get ready to give you our tithes and offerings, we ask that you will take them and you will use them. We ask that you will give us, continue to give us as leaders a spirit of good stewardship, that we will use every, every cent in a wise and a worthy way to help bring hope to the center of hurting human hearts around the world. So we love you, Lord. These are our gifts back to you, saying thank you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Can we say amen? amen? Can we say amen again? Amen. And again, the Lord is the strength of my life. Who shall I fear? Amen. Good morning. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we give you glory and honor. Your majesty reigns forever. You are a sweet fragrance to us, dear Heavenly Father. You are a wall around us that protects us, dear Heavenly Father, from the attacks of the evil one. Dear Heavenly Father, you are the rose of Sharon. Dear Heavenly Father, you are the lion of Judah. And dear Heavenly Father, you are a lamb, a lamb that went to the slaughter for us. And dear Heavenly Father, you just snatched us out of our evil and wicked ways, dear Heavenly Father, and set us anew and fresh as we think of you and as we dedicate our lives to you. The word today and the meditation of our hearts, dear Heavenly Father, may they be totally, totally released unto you. Dear Heavenly Father, as we give the word, or as I give the word today, I pray that I'm just a mouth, and you are the words. You're the lesson, dear Heavenly Father. You're the teacher. May your spirit just walk amongst us today and touch us where we are, dear Heavenly Father. Anoint us with the truth to believe in you. Thank you, dear Heavenly Father. We give you all glory give you all honor and praises because you are the strength of our life. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God is good.
Oh, I forgot we can't say that in this church because we will get that echo. God is good. And all the time. Amen. Amen. Well, you know, Pastor Sheila, I thank you for the opportunity to give the word. I thank you for your leadership, your friendship, and I appreciate always fellowshipping with you and Hope Center of Christ. I thank you for the members that come to Hope Center of Christ because you help the word of the Lord come alive for maybe a, a guest or another member that hasn't quite committed themselves to the things of God. It is a tragedy when we come to church and we believe or we think that everyone knows the Almighty God. It's also a tragedy when we know God, but we still walk in shame because of the sins that we commit. You see, we are not in a sinless world, but in, but in a sinful world. And let me see if I can help you out. Christ died 2,000 years ago to set us free. Now that means he was the word. He was the word, he was with God, and he was the word, and he is the word. So that means that he knows everything. He knew before today, before you came out of your mother's womb, that you were going to be a sinner. He knew that we were going to fight sin for all of our lives until we go back to be with him. But he is faithful and just. And you are under spiritual attack when you believe that you are not worthy to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. When the sins that we commit seems to put that uh, valley or that long canyon or what do you want to say between God and us, it is because you are allowing the spiritual attack of Satan to steal your blessing, to steal your relationship that you have already with Jesus Christ, not by your works or my works, but because of his works that he did on the cross at Calvary. So, Pastor Sheila said, Jesus, getting to know you. Now, that topic somewhat throws us back a little bit because Jesus getting to know you. That's not Jesus getting to know you and me. He has that down pat. He knows us. Do we know him? Sometimes we profess Jesus as Lord and we say we know him. We know him. Do you really know him? Do you really know how he loves you? Do you really know how he's forgiven you? Do you really, really know that in the darkest hours that Jesus Christ is there? Pastor Sheila said, we're going to take the book of John and we're going to go through the book of John and see if we can help our memberships, membership and ourselves to get this focus, this uh, like, a lightning-like focus on Jesus Christ, getting to know him. So when the book of John opens, it said he was the word, he was with the word, and the word is God. Amen? Amen. Then it goes on and showed Jesus performing his first miracle that Pastor Sheila spoke about. The first miracle, Jesus Christ was at the wedding, and his mother came and said, Son, make me some more wine for this wedding feast. Pastor Sheila went on to let us know why they needed wine. That was a custom of theirs that during a celebration that they would have a lot of wine to celebrate the marriage of these two people in union. Of course, we don't advocate drinking and getting drunk, and neither does the scripture, but that was just a custom in their day. Then we went on and we saw that Jesus traveled and he spoke about the coming of his resurrection and the days when we would receive eternal life. There was a group of folks around during this time called the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Now, I find this to be very interesting because Christ later on says that if you don't have the faith of a Pharisee, then 
you're kind of weak-minded or weak in your belief in Jesus Christ. Even though these Pharisees and these other religious leaders wanted to kill Jesus or challenged his authority, he still said if we didn't have faith or if we didn't have a knowledge of him like the Pharisees, we need to do some woodshedding. We need to open our scriptures and read our scriptures. The scriptures from the Old Testament to the New is proclaiming the arrival of Jesus Christ. And so we find out as we read through John a little further that one of these religious leaders by the name of Nicodemus comes and, and speaks to Christ. He doesn't speak to Christ in the open. He comes at night. I would like to say like a thief in the night. He comes and he says, Jesus, we know that you are who you say you are because no one can form, perform the miracles that you perform. Amen? And so Jesus goes to put him to the test, and he says some natural things, and he says some spiritual things that Nicodemus, this learned Pharisee, did not understand. And so this was sort of the culture of the time. This is what's somewhat what's going on at the time in, in Judea, Jerusalem. This is what's going on. And so there's a lot of jealousy that cropped up because of Jesus' acclaimed authority to be the Son of God. Not only at this time was Jesus a threat to the religious leaders of the time, but also John the Baptist. John was also an authority from God. If we can remember that the angel visited John's father, who was a priest, when he was in the temple and told him, you're going to have a son who's going to make a way for the Savior that's coming. He spoke that to Zechariah. He spoke that to Elizabeth to let them know that he would have the authority to tell the people, repent of your sins and be baptized. Baptized by water made you new because you are now dedicating your life back unto God. Can I get an amen? amen. I don't know where the Lord is leading me, but please just go along with me. Amen. And so... The religious leaders wanted to know, well, who gave you this authority? Who gave you this authority? So I'll put the Bible here, and I'll keep my notes here. Amen? I'm glad you guys said that. So when John's authority was attacked, and Jesus' authority was attacked. I did some research, and I would encourage you to do the same research. I looked at John 17, 2, 5, so I jumped ahead of the study that Pastor Sheila is going to present to us. It says in John 17, 2 and 5, for you have given him authority, speaking of Jesus, over everyone. He gives eternal light to each one you have given him. And this is the way to have eternal life, to know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, the one that was sent to earth. So Jesus, 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 Jesus. Jesus was sent to earth do you know why Jesus was sent to earth? Was Jesus sent to earth to die for your sins? Was Jesus sent to earth to abolish the law? No. Jesus was sent to earth to cause us to look at the one who sent him. Let's say that again because I only got one amen for that. He did not come to die for yours and my sin. He did not come 
to die on a cross, but he came to point us towards Jesus, God the Father. Amen? Now, John was also criticized for his authority. Now, you got to understand this. Here's Pastor Sheila, right? Or Pastor Harold, right? We are trying to point the way to Jesus Christ. And so we are saying that God has anointed us to give the word. Now, all of you out there got one knucklehead that may come and say, wait a minute, where do you get that authority? How come you are saying those things? That is what was happening with Jesus and John the Baptist. Okay? And so that's what was going on. And so John, John authority came from God. And I know because now I look back into the book of Luke, 1, 15 to 17, it says, For he will be great, speaking of John the Baptist, in the eyes of the Lord. He must never touch wine or other alcoholic drinks. He will be filled with the Holy Spirit even before his birth. And he will turn many Israelites to the Lord their God. He will be a man with the spirit and power of Elijah. But let's stop one minute. John was also here to turn many Israelites to the Lord their God. Amen? We hear, repent, 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 repent of your sins, repent of your sins. And we're thinking that he's coming to say, you're a sinner, stop that sinning, you're a sinner. The big thing John was saying was, turn to the Lord, your God. Amen? Amen. Amen. And so, I read this a little further. And it puzzled me what I read. Listen to this. In John 1, 15 to 17, it goes on to say, He, speaking of John, will turn the hearts of the fathers to their children, and he will cause those who are rebellious to accept wisdom of the godly. And I said, hmm, turn the hearts of the fathers. What does that mean? Turn the hearts of the fathers to his children. Hmm. And when I further read it said, a father's heart being turned to his children means that he has a deep heart's desire to see each child grow up to be a man or woman after Jesus' heart. He will make personal financial sacrifices to make sure that each child and grandchild remain faithful to the following of Jesus Christ. Where are your children today? The child or the man, the teenager, where are they today? Have you caused them to turn their hearts to Jesus. Hell is real. Where are your children? Where are they? Turn their hearts to Jesus. I see a young family here that has their little newborn already turning his heart to Jesus. I see another youth in here that the father loves so much that he's turning his heart to his children so that they will know Jesus Christ. So the Pharisees, Sadducees, they didn't like this message at all. <laughs> it's a funny thing. John was baptizing, right? And then Jesus' disciples across the way was baptizing. This is what happens sometime in the body of Christ. We think that we have 
the number one spot to do only what God wants done. When across the road there's someone else preaching the same gospel, maybe a little different. Maybe they're singing a different music, a different song. But we're all trying to lead people to Almighty God. And so John's disciples say, hey, John, uh, what about those people over there? They're baptizing. John knew why he was sent here. He was sent here to make a way for the bridegroom. And he said, leave them alone. Leave them alone. Amen? Amen. And so, even amongst us sometimes, there are conflicts. They said Jesus is baptizing, but we know that Jesus never baptized anyone. It was his disciples that were doing the baptizing. Amen? All right. So it got so contentious in Jerusalem that Christ decided that he will leave. He left Jerusalem because there was a scheme to kill Jesus. But Jesus did not leave Jerusalem because he was afraid to die. He left Jerusalem because he had to be about his father's business. And his time to die had not yet come. So we know that Christ leaves Judea. He was walking. He wasn't driving a Beamer or a Mercedes Benz or anything like that. He was walking. And so during his journey, he had to walk across the desert. I said, hmm. Jesus walking across a desert. I said, now I remember that it is written that he was fully God and fully human. So this human Jesus walking across the desert is going to get thirsty. He's going to get tired. All the things that happen to us. But I looked again. I said, desert. Desert, desert, wow. How many deserts do we have in our life that we are walking through? We have a desert. Do you have a dry spell in your life where it doesn't seem like anything is happening the way you want it happen to happen? Are you walking in a desert of loneliness? Are you alone and feel like no one cares about you? Walking across the desert, are you afraid? Are you afraid of what people may say about you or do to you? Walking across the desert, are you sitting here wondering how I'm going to pay my mortgage, my car payment, or my rent? Walking across the desert, Am I wrestling with some sin that seems to be in my body, in my bones, in my mind, in my thoughts? Are you wrestling with an addiction that you've been trying to throw off for many, many years? Forget the days. We know that when our struggles and when our deserts are there, if we don't seek Jesus they will stay there for a long, 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 long time. They will stay there so long that you would say, what's the use? I may, may as well give up, allow that desert to consume me, and be done with it. But I'm here to tell you that you keep holding on to Jesus Christ. You keep praying to Almighty God. You keep looking for him. You stay focused on Jesus. He's your way out. He's your way out. He will take that desert that you've had in your life and he would use it as a testimony. He would use it 
to release someone else. He will use it so that when you find yourself in another desert, you don't have to worry about how you're coming out. Because you know Jesus is the same today, yesterday, and for always. Now Jesus is on his travel and he gets to a little place called Sychar. Sychar is a little place between Jerusalem and Galilee. Or if you want to say Judea and Galilee. When he gets there, he's there at a well. Jesus, getting to know you. Getting to know you, getting to know all about you. Hey, so Jesus, in his fully human state, sets on this well in Sychar. Now remember, he left Jerusalem because he knew he must be about his father's business. Let's look at that well for a minute. He sat on a well between Sychar, on Sychar between Judea and Galilee. What is your well that Jesus is sitting on? Is he sitting on the well beside your bed when you're saying your prayers? Is he sitting on your well when you're driving your car? Is he sitting on the well when you're walking? Is he sitting on your well? Well, where is he sitting with you? So as he sits on the well, I can see Jesus now saying, where is she? Where is she? I'm waiting for her. She's running a little bit behind. So we know that the Samarian woman comes to the well comes to the well. She had a date with destiny and didn't even know it. Many of us have a date with destiny and don't even know it. Jesus Christ hears your prayers. Jesus Christ cares. Jesus Christ has set you free. You only have to believe. You only have to believe. So this woman, this Samaritan woman, comes to the well. Now, she's real smart. She is real clever. Because just like some of us, when we go to our well and we see someone in our well, we'll say, now, what are they doing in our well? With Jesus, I can just see her saying that, this guy sitting on my well does not have a bucket to draw any water with. He doesn't have a rope to pull the bucket out of the well. What is this character doing at my well? <laughs> Jesus, who knows all things, was probably saying, <laughs> I got news for you today. And so they sit on the well. And Christ said, woman, I am thirsty. Would you give me something to drink? The woman said, it has to be something going on here. Because I am a Samaritan woman and the Jews has nothing to do with the Samaritans. What was Christ doing there? At that moment, what statement was Christ's presence making? His statement was saying that we, as a people, have to get rid of our cultural divides. We have to get rid of racial divide. We have to get rid of anything that will separate us from the love of Jesus Christ. Because in God, there is no difference 
between men. No difference whatsoever. And so she said, uh, sure, I'll give you a drink of water. I'll give you a drink. My goodness, look at that very closely. She could have very well said, no, 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 no. You're a Jew. Get off of this well and you go. But she didn't say that. She said, I will give you a drink. That was a feather in her cap because that was goodness that she was showing. We should all show, so, show goodness, correct? Even though we know goodness won't get us in the kingdom, we can't buy our way into the kingdom. We can't do good deeds to get into the kingdom. We can't help the little widow come across the street and get into the kingdom. We can't dash out in front of a car and save a child and roll over four times and stand him back up on his feet. None of that is going to get us into the kingdom. The only thing that's going to get us into the kingdom is a belief in Jesus Christ, our Lord. So Christ has got to be the coolest guy. He's got to be the coolest guy I know. He said on the well, he said, woman, this water that you're giving me, it will fill my thirst uh, for a moment, but you will thirst again. Hmm. Hmm. Thirst again. What is this dude talking about? Thirst again. He doesn't have a bucket. He doesn't have a rope. In fact, he don't even own this well. Christ said, if you knew who you were talking to, the water that I give would be living water and you would not thirst again. Boy, but just like us humans, I know what that woman was thinking about. She was saying, my goodness, I have to come out to this well two and three times a day. I have to take this water back, wash my clothes, dump it out, come back again and give me some more water. Then I have to water the camels. Then I got to water my garden. Then I got to, oh, man. Well, I want this living water because I don't want to come back to this well over and over and over and over again. You mean to tell me I can stay at home and water will just be there? Wow. I want this water. Give me that water. <laughs> I can just see that's what she was thinking because she had not yet found out that he was the Messiah, that he was the Christ. Give me this water. That's the natural side of her. Give me this water. I want this water now. How many of us want this living water? How many, how many of us really want this living water? This living water will change your life. This living water, though it satisfy your thirst, will create a fire inside of you. A fire that seems to never be quenched regardless of how much of this living water you take. Because this living water that Christ has to give you is the word of God, the gift of God. And when you have that living water, you want more and more and more and more. Yes, Lord, it's like a Lay's potato chip. <laughs> you can't eat one. You can't eat it. For me, it's Oreos. But that living water creates a fire, creates a fire in your soul, creates a fire that will not be quenched because of your love and your desire for Jesus Christ. <laughs> he said, I'm going to give you living water. She said, uh, hold on, homeboy. You're telling me you're greater than Jacob? Because, see, Jacob had built some wells 
on this land. He, did, he built quite a few in the area. And so she began to challenge him. Are you as good as the prophet Jacob? And of course, that is what we say when we say, do you want this living water? Do you want to serve Jesus? Do you promise with all your heart to dedicate your life to Jesus? And someone comes along and said, hey, come here. There's one better than Jesus. Do we do that when we allow ourselves to go into alcoholism? Do we do that when we get joy out of beating our wives? Do we do that when we do things that we know that are ungodly and we are struggling with things and we succumb to them? Are we really taking in that living water that can change our life? Only God can be the judge of that, not me. And I know, boy, I don't know about you guys, man. I don't care how much of the word of God you get. I don't care how much you pray. The devil who is real will be right on your heels. He will be right on your heels, and you better be running. You better be running. It's like what that motivational speaker said, that somewhere in Africa, when the morning comes, the lion rises up for breakfast, and he's running at that zebra. And the zebra is running to stay alive. Running to stay alive. Are you running? to stay alive? Are, are you running by having your faith in Jesus? Are you running by believing and receiving his truth in your life? If you are, you're okay. The woman yet not believing said, well, Lord, if you know, uh, it is written that uh, one day there will be the Messiah who will come and he will know Everything. Christ said, well, I am he. And I think she had a doubt about that. And then Christ had to erase that doubt. He said, go and get your husband, woman, and come back. She said, uh, I don't have a husband, duh. Christ said, you have been truthful. He said, you have had five of them. And the man that you're shacking up with now is not your husband. Now, come on, ladies. When a man can read you like that, you know he has some special power. <laughs> if he read me like that, I know he'll have a special power. She said, Lord, you are the Messiah. You are the Christ. And she took this. Now, I, I would pray to God that every believer would do this. That when you profess Christ as your Lord and Savior and, and you see what a difference it has made in your life, I wish you would do what that Samaritan woman did. She ran. She ran to the town or to the village where her people were, and she said, come, come, there's this dude at the well. He has told me everything about myself. He is the Messiah. Come, come. My goodness gracious, how many of us are reaching out to our friends, our family, and our children and saying, come. I want you to have this Messiah in your life. Come. I want you to know Jesus Christ. Come. 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 All we have to say is come. And when they get here, they will meet Jesus face to face. That is what happened. They came. And Jesus started teaching, and they believed, and they told that loudmouth woman, shut up. 
We no longer believe just because of what you said. We believe because we've heard him and we know without a shadow of a doubt this is the Christ. This is the Messiah. You see, I think this story about the Samaritan is really a salvation, salvation story. You see, I believe that God delivers us from our sins. He delivers us from our pain. He delivers us from our hurt. He put inside of us joy. He puts inside of us peace. He puts inside of us courage. He puts inside of us confidence. He puts inside of us his very own word and the spirit that he has given to us keeps us closer, closer than a child. I'm coming on down the home stretch. Of course, his disciples come back and they see him speaking with this woman. He said, Master, what are you doing speaking to her? Don't you know she's a woman? Don't you know who she is? Those was her, their thoughts. But I don't think they were going to challenge Christ like that and verbalize it. So they went on to the next thing they, that they wanted to know. Say, Jesus, we know you're hungry. Come on and eat. He said, hey. He said, I got food. Now check this out. These are men that have walked with the Savior. And they look at each other like I would look at Jose and Mike and say, did you bring him something? Did you feed him? Uh, what about you? Did, you? did you bring him something to eat? Christ said, you don't understand. My food comes from the Father. My food comes from the Father. He fills me up. He fills me up with his grace, with his love. And I've just been filled by giving the word of God to this Samaritan woman. I have just saved a life. And this that I have done, I want you to do. I want you to do. There's been other prophets before you, disciples. There's been other wise men before you, disciples. They have planted the seed about my coming. They have directed people towards the cross. Now you have to go and harvest. You have to go and harvest where you did not plant. You have to go and tell the world about me. Guess what? You are the disciples. Go and tell the world about Jesus. Amen? I guess I say amen too many times. Amen? Uh, well, hallelujah. God is good. And all the time, give God a hand clap. Well, I guess, guess that got past the door, Lord. Okay. So let's bring it on down and we'll complete the chapter. We know that a man comes to Christ who, whose son is almost on the deathbed, and he asked the Lord to come and to heal his son. And the Lord said, I'll come down. And the man said, no, just say the word. Christ says the word. The man's son is healed. The man is on his way back to see his son and he's met on the road by some of his servants who tell him that his son lives. His son lives. The man said, what time did this happen? And they told him the time that it happened and he knew that Jesus had answered his prayers. Jesus will answer your prayers, folks. He cares about you. He cares about you. You see, I'm jumping through my notes because he cares about you. 
His gift is eternal life. Amen? Amen. Lord, have mercy. What am I looking for? Okay, this is what I'm looking for. No, that is not what I'm looking for. This is what I'm looking for. What is the great need for the world and the church today? In other words, what is our purpose? What is the church's purpose in the world today? What is your purpose? What is your purpose? What is my purpose? Jeremiah 2.13 tells us, it says, my people have done two evil things. They have abandoned me, the fountain, the fountain of living water. Can you see this woman at the well that's now been blessed and received the gift of salvation, go back to her wicked ways, go back to her lost ways? That would be an, an abandonment. Have some of us in here given our lives to the Lord and just said, amen, I'll just go to church. I really don't think this is where I'm supposed to be, and I really don't know, but I'd rather be here than be there. Have you abandoned the Lord even though you're sitting here? What is the great need for the church today? And number two, they have dug for themselves cracked cisterns that can hold no water at all. In other words, without Christ, we are nothing. We are trying to do it all ourselves. And that's not the way that God has created his man and his woman. He has created us to depend on him. And finally, Yes, who said that? <laughs> From the mouths of babes. He said, hurry up, pastor. <laughs> That's the way it sounded to me. Jason, you taught him, didn't you? Okay. <laughs> All right. So we know we don't fight this battle alone. Lord, have mercy. That last song, that last song. Whew. Yeah, the Lord is the strength of my life. Whom shall I fear? Mm, 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 mm. Amen. That brought tears to my eyes. And I pray to God that it would bring tears to your spirit, your soul. What is <laughs> This is a place we ought to be able to weep and wail. Weep and wail because of the joy. God's unspeakable joy. Oh. <sighs> So as I conclude, I want to conclude with this. I want to encourage you to always put on the armor of God because your belief will be attacked. Your desire to live more for God will be attacked. In this world, we see persecution right now. And we feel sorry for those that we see who are dying, who are dying at the hands of a non-believing world. But it is my desire to let you know that you don't have to lose your life to be persecuted. You don't have to be beheaded and be persecuted. You can be persecuted by not turning to God. You can be persecuted by being persuaded to believe in anything else other than God. You can be persecuted when they take the Ten Commandments out of our courtrooms. You can be persecuted when they prevent prayer from your schools. You can be persecuted when they cause you to look at marriage other than between a man and a woman. You can be persecuted when you stand in church and make these kind of statements. You can be persecuted 
when you don't pray to Almighty God. You can be persecuted when you call out the faults of someone in the, with their immoral acts. Persecuted. Persecuted. The church of Christ is being persecuted right here, right now. It's like the story of the, of the frog. You know how you cook him? You throw him in some water, put a few lily pads in there, and he's happy as a lark. Turn that heat up just a little bit. He said it's getting warm up in here, but it still feels good. Then by the time he knows it, he has fallen asleep to take a nap. And you turn that heat all the way up. What's for dinner, baby? Frogs. Frogs. What's for dinner, baby? The church of Jesus Christ. Why? Why? Because they've forgotten you. Why? Because they think they can do it all themselves. Why? Because when you sat on the well, they did not drink. Why? Jesus said, come. 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 So walk your walk in truth. Talk your talk and live your life in righteousness. Remember to always carry the gospel of truth. Be peaceful, but be ready for a fight. Fight with the word of God. It's your sword. Remember when you walk, walk in faith that your God will never leave you nor forsake you. He is with you wherever you go. And remember, when the accuser comes, when the accuser try to tear you down, remember you have been set free by the salvation of Almighty God. You are delivered. You are delivered and you are favored of God. Pray always, not just for yourself. Pray for the other saints. Pray for the other believers. Intercede on their behalf. Pray always without ceasing. And if you are a good warrior in the army of Jesus Christ, you must stay alert. Stay alert. Because the enemy is looking to see who he can take out. Jesus. Do you know him? 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 In the name of Jesus Christ, who is our Lord and Savior, dear Heavenly Father, we humbly give ourselves to you. We honor and adore you, dear Heavenly Father. We give you the glory as we walk in your mighty power. It's not by our might, but it's by your might that we are victorious. We are victorious, dear Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And amen. And amen. And amen. Before the choir sing and before the pastor come, today, help me to be obedient to the Lord. I would like to see all the men come forward after the service just for five minutes or less. Can we do that? Can we do that, men? All the men that will stay back, let me see your hands. I see two men, but 20 of them in here. The rest of them must be in drag. 
Okay. So how many men can I see by the show of hands? Hallelujah. There's a few more. Thank you. Give God the glory. Amen. 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 brother in Christ. Thank you. Thank you. And so now you stand for the benediction. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. Oh, may the Lord lift up his countenance upon you. And may he give you peace. Peace that passes all understanding. May he give you faith that is unshakable. Joy that is unsinkable love that is unquenchable. Be blessed. The Lord loves you. Amen. Amen. Well, praise the Lord. We're going to go out with our new song, The Lord is My Light and My Salvation. Anytime you're ready, Scott, whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. And
upon a rock Out of the reach of them all When my enemies try to hurt me I don't have to worry He's in his care right here But everywhere I go to that hiding place Where I seek my God's face He gives me strength to go on Oh, don't you know, don't you know He carries me Comfort to me When I'm going through the storm Strong.